Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my Q1 2024 favourites video. It's now September, so we're now getting on for the end of Q3. So I really ought to uh, get this out, but yes, these are the 10, my 10 favourite books from January, February, March of 2024. Obviously it has now been at least six months since I read any of these. So I may be a little bit rusty, but I've just quickly glanced at the list and I remember, I remember most of these, I think. So um, let's go ahead. Dane reads. So at number 10, we have Becoming by Michelle Obama. So this is just Michelle Obama's memoir. It covers her time growing up, um, going through law school, meeting Barack Obama, and then kind of through the rise of his political career. Um, but obviously at the same time, she had her own career in uh, law. She's raising a family as well. Um, really interesting stuff. Lots of interesting stuff on like the socioeconomic um, like implications of race and things like that. Um, and the various different ways she's been treated as an intelligent black woman with a mind of her own. Um, society doesn't tend to like that. And it especially didn't tend to like that 20, 30 years ago. I think we're getting better now. We're heading in the right direction at least. Um, it's a really interesting memoir. It's one of those where it would be a fascinating memoir anyway, just because of the life she's lived. If you don't count all of the White House stuff with Barack, you know. Now, the only thing I will say is that after reading that, I then read A Promised Land by Barack Obama. And it does cover a lot of the same ground. And the two of them were kind of writing at the same time. So you almost only need to read one of them. Um, I don't know. They were both pretty good. Um, we will probably see more about A Promised Land in my Q2 favourites. But yes, Becoming by Michelle Obama, recommended. Okay, then we have Superior by Angela Saini. And I'm gonna very quickly just Google here, Angela Saini Superior, to give you the uh, the subtitle for this one. It's nonfiction, Superior, The Return of Race Science. Uh, so basically, I previously read and really enjoyed her book, Inferior, which was about um, women in science and how science has screwed them over. Um, Superior is basically the same thing. And it's the idea of how scientists often, sometimes with the best will in the world, get race wrong um, and yeah I, I don't want to say too much about it because it's one of those books you should just read if you're worried about racism institutionalized racism particularly racism in science and especially if you're somebody like me who is a white dude who you know it would be very easy for me to accidentally be racist with the right intentions and as I say that happens quite a lot with scientists as well um, they kind of will try and do kind of liberal forward thinking investigations into race in which they rely on outdated racist stereotypes that you wouldn't even consider to be racist if that makes sense really massively written book uh, angela saini is is incredible um she actually appears in this list again and is probably one of my favorite non-fiction writers at number eight, we have 3001, The Final Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. All there is to say about this is it's the last book in the uh, Space Odyssey series. I actually think it was my favorite of the lot. Now, I do know that not many people agree with me, so just take that with a little pinch of salt because, you know, you, you might not like it as much as I did. But if you're interested in Arthur C. Clarke and you've read the series up to this point, you're going to want to check it out. Then at number seven, we have The Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett. So this is, I believe, the final Discworld book. It's certainly the final Discworld book that I hadn't read. Um, and so because of that, that's part of the reason why it ranks so highly for me is because I'm a huge Discworld fan. And obviously, it's the end of, end of an era for me now that I've read them all. Um, but it was also masterfully written as well. And it's very impressive considering what Pratchett was going through with his, you know, diagnosis of uh, Alzheimer's at the time. And... Um, you can't tell in the way it's written. It's, it's just as good as ever. Uh, it is a Tiffany Aching book and those aren't necessarily my favourites, but it might well be my favourite of the Tiffany Aching books. Then we have Mostly Harmless by Douglas Adams. Same deal here, actually. This is the last of the books in the Hitchhiker series, if you don't count the new one that is that was written by uh, Owen Colfer. And it just brought the trilogy that's now in five part six with this new one it brought it to a nice ending again i've read online it didn't get the best reviews but i thought it was maybe not the strongest entry but it certainly was still a strong entry in the series and again if you've read up till that point you're gonna you're gonna want to check that out okay at number five we have the big son of mercury by isaac asimov this is one of his uh, david lucky star novels which they're more like sci-fi adventures rather than anything um lucky star is like a 
almost like a Han Solo kind of style character. And he has he has his own Chewbacca in the form of Big Man, who's a Martian dude who's not big at all. He's like five foot one or whatever. And he hates jokes about his height. He's very quick to uh, anger. But it's also good because there's lots of twists and turns as well. Um, it's almost like Dan Brown in space, if Dan Brown was a better writer and the books were a third of the length but had twice the plot in them, you know? Um, so yes, definitely recommend any of those Lucky Star novels. And I believe they were originally published under the pseudonym of Paul French as well. Okay, and number four, we have Angela Saini again with The Patriarchs. And um, this is similar to Superior, except the idea behind the patriarchs is it's looking at patriarchy in society. Um, it looks at the history of patriarchal societies and also shows that actually there are a lot of uh, matriarchal societies as well, as well as quite a few sort of totally egalitarian societies. And it just looks at the history of it, uh, the, com the, the sort of the cultural impact of it all, the t t implications for the lives we live today. And also like a lot of people who uh, anti-feminism or whatever they will point at the uh, the uh, argument to history same with like vegans people will say well cavemen ate meat uh, failing to notice by the way that cavemen ate a lot of nuts seeds and berries as well um but anyway that they put in the gatherers and hunter gatherers the meat was a feast if they managed to catch something but anyway i digress um but yeah the patriarchs it just looks at that idea of like just because there have been patriarchal societies in the past does that mean that we should still have them answer obviously no again if you the other one is like if you consider yourself against racism you should read in this one if you uh, consider yourself against inequality in general but obviously in particular uh, gender inequality definitely read it if you're a feminist read the patriarchs and number three we have pirates of the asteroids by isaac asimov so this is another one of the uh, david lucky star books this one's actually interesting because his backstory as a character is that his parents were killed by like space pirates um, and those are the pirates of the asteroids. And in this book, Lucky Star goes to infiltrate the group of pirates and uh, maybe to find out what happened to his parents along the way. But also, I mean, he has a reason to be there just in general, like these pirates are doing bad shit. They need to be investigated. And he just happens to be the perfect person to do so. But he also has his own, you know, his own reasons for why he might want to go and investigate them. Probably the best of the whole Lucky Star series. That's why it ranks so high. And number two, we have In the Jingle Jangle Jungle by Joel Guion. So this is uh, a memoir of his time with the Brian Jonestown Massacre. Joel Guion was the tambourine player slash percussionist for the BJM. I say was, he still is. Um, and yeah, they're one of my favourite bands. And I was lucky enough to, I got sent an advanced copy for review. Uh, and I was lucky enough to also be able to interview him for my radio show. And I went to the launch party that they had for it that was nearby as well. Um, it was really appreciated him, to, him giving me that time. Uh, I got a signed copy of his book from my friend Jordana as well, who is a big BJM fan. Um, yeah, if you like the Brian Jonestown Massacre or you like anything to do with psychedelia, um, check it out. They were kind of like the, 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 the Brian Jonestown Massacre and the Dandy Warhols were kind of like the blur and oasis of the US. And it was a sort of similar time, um, early to mid 90s. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. And that probably would have been my favourite, but it was pipped at the post by number one, which is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, which is just a very unsettling book. It's about a family that live in this village. They live kind of on the outskirts of the village. Everyone in the village is very distrustful of them, sometimes veering into outright hatred. And there's a secret. There was an incident in which a few of the family members died. And basically the remaining family members are all living together. Um, we've got the whole unreliable narrator thing going on. And throughout the book, we start to learn the truth of why and how those family members died. It's just a masterclass. I've read some other Shirley Jackson in the past and have enjoyed it. We've always lived in the castle isn't like next level. Um, it's by far her best book, I think. Her other books were good. We have always lived in the castle shows why she's considered a classic author. And um, it's going to be a tough one to beat out for my book of the year. So there we have it. Those are my quarter one faves of 2024. I will link below to any of these that have got review videos as well. Um, but as always, in the meantime, let me know if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another books video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.